Thank you, Mike, for your continued support. Happy Black History Month. Well, thank me for my continued support. I, I'm, I'm trying to guess at what uh, <clears throat> what Michael Bird is meaning with this, and I, I, I think I figured it out. It uh, when he talks about my continued support, I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about my support for the idea of equal justice in this country, equal justice under law, equal protection under law, equal opportunity under law. And if that's what Michael is referring to, um, okay, yeah, I'll accept that. I and the people that listen to this podcast, I, I firmly believe this, have done whatever we can to further the idea of equal justice. And part of that, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, part of that includes us white people, or we white people, educating ourselves about what our black brothers and sisters have gone through. This is, this is, this is where we have failed. No, seriously. I'm, I'm not trying to blame anybody. I'm as responsible for this in my life as perhaps you are in your life. That's for you to decide. If, you know, I'm talking to white people right now. But I have many times on this podcast or on talk radio, when I hosted a talk radio program, have claimed my own racism and, and how I came or how it came to reside in me. You know, I, I didn't wake up one time when I was three or four years old and say, hmm, I think I'm going to be a racist. By that time, I was damn close to it already, though, because the ideas of racism had been put in me. The beginnings had already been put in me. I've talked about this so many times on this on, on the programs that I've done. I'm not going to claim victim status and say, well, I'm not responsible for the racism except insofar as it was true. Every white person in this country, say over the age of 20, I I think this younger generation has waked up to this. But all of us white people were, were inculcated with the belief, white good, black bad. White good, black inferior. White good, um, black scary. We didn't ask for that. When we were kids, we didn't ask for it. So many white kids, north, south, it doesn't make any difference where geographically in this country, so many white kids had black playmates, and black kids had white playmates until a certain age. And then the separation began. So when Michael Bird says, thank you, Mike, for your continued support, I assume that's what he meant support in this struggle, this ongoing struggle. And there's something that, 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 that white people need to understand. And it's not a threatening phrase. It's a real phrase. And that phrase is no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. How many times have you seen that in groups of people demonstrating for just that? Justice. When I think about Black History Month, I... I got myself to the point where I I, I can feel the anger rising. Black History Month, 12 months in the year. One month, we're going to talk about black history. And what, what is talked about in black history? Well, there is a glossing over, a cursory look at slavery. Yeah, well, people were enslaved, but then they were made free. End of story. Uh, there's some emphasis on, well, George Washington Carver. Um, that was always a favorite of the white uh, teachers that I had as a kid growing up. Peanuts! Um, but shouldn't black history include, I mean, American history includes example after example of white people committing horrible crimes as, as well as producing wondrous results. So when they talk about Black History Month, first of all, why is it black history? Why not just history? Why is it not just incorporated into our history? What, black people stand aside from American history, right? 
You have American history and black history. But, 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 but black people were so fundamental to building America. Why is it black history over here and, and American history over here? Oh, don't get into that, Malloy. Let's talk about jazz. Uh, uh, let's talk about, um, um, you know, uh, the musical styles. Uh, let's, uh, let, let's talk about uh, Motown. <laughs> Why is there not focus 12 months out of the year or what, whatever the school year is, nine months, whatever it is, a focus on history, American history that includes what we did. By we, I'm referring to white people. I mean, we've had the power, white Christians, nobody else, not white Jews, not white Muslims, not yellow Jews or yellow Muslims, no, 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 white people. Why doesn't the teaching of American history include the horror that was put on black folk? The horror of Jim Crow. The horror of separations of families. Remember the outrage when we discovered the families who were being separated at our southern border and kids put in cages and parents sent off to God knows where and nobody kept track of them? And people went berserk. White people went berserk. Like, what the hell is going on? That is something that black folk had to endure from the moment they were dragged here in chains until beyond the Emancipation Proclamation. Where's my son? Where's my daughter? Where's my mom? Where's my dad? Families ripped to pieces. Sold off. That's where the term sold down the river comes from. Dear God, why isn't, why isn't this taught? Not so that we, can, we white people can walk around, uh, you know, with a horrible look of shame and guilt on our faces and beat ourselves with birch whips. No, not because of that. But so we can understand why this, this scream for justice is not going to stop until it's delivered. Until it's available, is what I should say. Nobody can deliver justice to anyone else. It has to be organic. It has to be there for everybody. And you know what that requires? And and I think this is part of what Ron DeSantis loses his shit about, frankly. And Manny Diaz, shame on you, Manny. But it requires white people shut, shutting their mouths. Stop talking. And listen to what our black brothers and sisters have been trying to tell us. My best friend for years, Steve Smith, who's now dead. Black stand-up comedian. When he and I first put together our relationship all those years ago, man on man, white man, black man, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And we did. And it was one of the most valuable friendships I've ever had. But I remember one of the first things that Steve said to me. He said, you know, in order for white people to understand the story we're trying to tell, Malloy, y'all have to shut up. Y'all have to just stop talking and listen. And I looked at him and I said, brother, do you know what I do for a living? <laughs> you no, know, that's, that's all I do is say. He said, you know what I'm talking about. White people need to listen. Y'all don't listen. Listen to what we have to say. Yeah, listen to what we have to say. I I have a hard time with, with, with an issue of guilt, collective guilt, individual guilt, racial guilt. Uh, you know, it, it's a difficult issue. It, it really is. A lot of white people fall back on this old saw. Well, I never owned any slaves. Well, I never knew anybody who did either. Why should I be talking about reparations to black people? Look, I, I, you know, I get that. There's not a white person alive who's in this country that I'm aware of who ever owned a slave. And there's not a black person alive who's ever been a slave in this country. But that doesn't mean shit. That means absolutely nothing. 
Because in the process of enslavement, in the process of stealing humanity from our black brothers and sisters, in order to build the United States into the capitalist powerhouse that it is, we took away from millions of people, not only their dignity, but their right to live, their right to participate, their right to share in democratic ideas and the idea of freedom and justice. White folk took that away. Oh, I didn't take it away, and I know you didn't either, my white brother, my white sister. I I get that. But what can you and I do about it? Well, one of the things we can do about it is keep talking to ourselves. Keep talking to ourselves about this issue. And I asked Steve one time, what's a white person to do to get the understanding that we need to have? And, and Steve told me, he said, look, look, it's very simple. It's very simple. You, you, you have to listen to what we're saying. Okay, Steve, how do I listen? You're listening to me, aren't you? Yes, I'm listening to you, pal. But how does every, I mean, what do we do? He, and, and Steve told me, you, you've got, you've got to, look, you're surrounded by black people, right? You may know a, a, a black uh, minister, a black uh, a, a plumber, uh, a, a, a black person who works at your local grocery store, um, a black school teacher, uh, maybe somebody who plays in a band. There's where you get your information that you, you're not, you, you can read books about this shit, Malloy. You can read books about racism and enslavement and the horror that black folk went through. But in order to understand it, you have to sit down and listen to people who have a direct connection back to it. And I've tried to, uh, I tried to listen to what Steve was saying at the time, and I think I did listen. It made perfect sense to me. Yeah, I can read Toni Morrison. I can read any black poet I want to read. I can read any black author I want to read. And and I get the shock. And I get that frisson of embarrassment that, that runs through me when I read this stuff. But then it passes. You know, it's in a book. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, my God. But if I sit down and talk to somebody who can say to me, yeah, listen, um, if you really want to know, Malloy, uh, my great-great-grandfather was enslaved on a plantation in South Carolina, and the stories have been passed down, and um, I can tell you about them, or I can tell you what I feel here in the year 2023 about what this culture, this society has done to me, a black person. You want to hear? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.